for the sake of my kids in Kenya, I was prepared to die because I wanted my kids to go to school. If I go there and then they don't go to school, what will be the story at home? The two common jobs there are caregiving and security. And so for men, mostly, we go for security. For ladies, caregiving. caregiving. Mm. Don't you think that you oh, mimi naenda kukua hata house, uh, house girl, uh, house help. Nobody can afford to pay a house help. So you do the caregiving where we have care homes. Mm. Yeah. And this caregiving, you may work with a person whom you have to help everything. And everything means everything. Kila kitu. Kila kitu. Even cleaning behind. They say cleaning people's behind. Yes. Hey, Kids will reach there and after two years they have already changed. Mm -hmm. But me, I've never changed. I even still say I'm going to school. Hey, I don't say I'm going to do this because <laughs> hey, I have seen so many who try to, to, to behave hey, like an American. Yes. And then he says, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to now start. Now you start wondering, Ngona, now this Ngona, you better even say Kiswahili. Hello and a warm welcome to Tuko Talks. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, what would make a man leave his prestigious teaching job in Kenya and go become a security guard in the US? And why does he say that life in America is not a walk in the park? We are about to listen to a wonderful story. And so without further ado, please allow me to let our guest today introduce himself. Hello, hello. Oh, thank you so much. Welcome to Tuko Talks. I'm just the simple Patrick Sumba Mutoro. Yes. I was born in Bungoma County. Yeah. I went to school in Bungoma County. Yeah. In another simple school called Hasoko Secondary School. Hasoko. Hasoko. Yes. Yes. So after finishing my Form 4, yeah. I, during our time, I was supposed to have joined A level yeah. because I had passed to join A level. Yes. So that I would go up to Form 6 and then go to the university if mm -hmm. I passed. But having come from a poor family, where even going to Form 1, I was known as the boy who came with the smallest box in the school. Mm -hmm. And in that box, there was just one blanket and one sheet. Yes. Even the shoe I had borrowed from a friend in the village, and it was not a leather shoe. It was what we called the waterproof shoes, rubber, I don't know whether they are called sandaka nowadays, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So I just said, okay, just lend me this shoe of yours. I go to the school, they will see me in shoes, but after two weeks, I will return to you your shoes and just start following nyayo, so that people just printing eh, without any shoe. And so he gave me, and after two weeks, because the home was a walking distance, mm -hmm. Although not very near, hmm. but in those days we could walk miles. Yeah. So I returned the shoes and just started walking barefoot mm -hmm. for the whole of my course there. Because it was a small school, they allowed students even to walk without shoes. As long as you have passed from one stage where it was like a roadblock. Yes. Yeah, because they must check whatever you have. But it is like they sympathized with me when they told me to open the box. Mm -hmm. And when I opened, there wasn't even any soap, nothing, except just the one blanket and that sheet. So even the blanket was not actually mine. The blanket belonged to a boy at home mm. who was looking after my uncle's cattle. Mm -hmm. But he, all of a sudden, it's like he decided to give up the job mm -hmm. and left that blanket. So you took So it. that is the one I took. Yeah. Because the only blanket we had was one and I was using it with my brother whom I follow. Mm -hmm. So if I went with it to school, then yeah. he will have no blanket. Yes. But now God knows how to change his own things. Mm. And so he enabled this boy to go so that Patrick can be able to get a blanket and go to Form 1. So when I reached Form 1, because my uncle was just uh, happy 
that I did the CPE in the Samoya Primary School. Mm. And I happened to have been the first student to pass that CPE with the first attempt. And so my uncle was so happy that he sold the cattle he had just to take me to Form 1. Mm -hmm. Then when I reached Form 2, now I had no fees. So it just happened again that my father, who was supposed even to be paying fees for me, had sold all the land we had. So we were declared homeless. My mother and the six of us now went to live at our angles. But I followed him. Eh? And he, now that he had money, he would walk from one bar to another. But I was just following him as a student. And you know, he used to be very harsh. Mm. So you could not uh, say anything against his it, wishes. Yes. But me, I just was praying that maybe something all of a sudden will come and he gives me only the required amount of fees for Form 2. Mm. And then I leave him to enjoy the rest of the money. Mm. So he would even say, okay, now uh, I want to show you our relatives. Uh, they come from Busia. So we would go there the following day. Sometimes it's like money burns people. Yes. Uh, so he wants to go from place to place. Yeah. But the, in the morning when he asked me, how much do they want? And I said 475 shillings. And he gave me the money. I left <laughs> the house as if the devil was after me. Mm. Yeah, and went, walked straight to school mm -hmm. and went and paid the money. Mm. So I finished Form 2. Yes. Now the problem is how will I now finish Form two, form 3? So at the end of Form 2, I had no fees. My uncle had sold his only cattle. I decided now to give up because our dream was if I can only be able to step in a high school, I'll one day say, oh yes, I also went and uh, I stepped in a high school, mm -hmm. even if it's for one day. Yes. So for me, two years was already a record. So I went and I was employed in the market to sell clothes. Those days we used to sell clothes in the open air market. Yes. Where today may be a market day in Butula. So you, you take your clothes there, you sell, mm -hmm. and I was employed at 35 shillings per month. Per month? Yes. Those days. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I was there the whole of January. I sold clothes February, March. Then around the 20th of March, it is like at school they had realized this student has the potential. Mm -hmm. But where did he go? So a teacher who knew what my problem was, I think, explained in the staff room. I, I don't know what they say. Mm. Then he started asking others if they can locate me. And so he said, oh, he sells clothes at the market. Mm -hmm. So he came. Then he, he asked me, can you come and maybe talk to the headmaster? Maybe he can allow you. You see, he's not saying directly. Yes. It's like he's testing to see yeah. whether you still have the motivation to go back to school. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, I can even go there tomorrow. And he said, okay, go tomorrow and ask the headmaster. Maybe mm. they can allow you to go to school. Mm. So I went and then I met the deputy principal. The headmaster was not in. So he started asking me questions. Uh, how many acres of land do you have? not knowing that our father had sold everything. Mm -hmm. I said, no, we just live at our angles. Mm -hmm. Then he said, how many are you? He said, we are six. Uh, are you the firstborn? I said, no, I'm the secondborn. So he asked me, where, where, where is the firstborn? Mm -hmm. He said, he's in standard seven. <laughs> <laughs> the then he was born? wondering, you are the secondborn, you want to come to form three, you are and first your firstborn is in standard seven. How? I said, yes. How? I said he, 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 he gave up with the tough conditions at our angles mm. and decided to go back uh, to, to, to Uganda, where our father used to work. Mm -hmm. But for me, I just persevered. So me, I continued, him, we went, then came back two years later, mm. now to start again standard seven. Mm. So the deputy principal asked me, if we allow you to come, how long are you going to take to come back to school? I told him, not later than tomorrow. Oh. So then he said, okay, go and come. 
So I came, I came back, I was even in a different uniform. Mm. They had changed. Mm. The Form 1s looked at me and they thought he, I was a Form 1. Mm -hmm. Because this person who is coming on 24th of March and the schools are going to close at the end of the year must be a Form 1. Mm -hmm. But the older students who are in Form 2, Form 3, Form 4, they knew me. Yes. Uh, they said Mutoro has come back. And that's now how I continued. Uh, the, he wrote me a note and said, oh, go and get your mattress. So I took the note, I saw they had written there, mm. uh, give him the mattress, he's learning on bursary. Mm. And at that time I didn't know even what bursary means. Mm. So I continued. Mm. I was able even to work within two weeks and I was in position six. Wow. Uh, they said, you see, look, um, Toro just came two weeks ago and you see he has beaten so many of you in mm -hmm, class. Mm -hmm. uh, look, even he's the leading in physics. Yes. Mm, I said, yeah. You know, physics is like in honor of my name, Patrick. Mm. Yes, so I will even now consider uh, t becoming also a teacher mm -hmm. in mathematics, mm -hmm. physics. Mm -hmm. Because my name is Mutoro Patrick, so Mutoro is for maths and Patrick is for physics. Mm. Then when I was walking around, because I could not afford any textbook, I went and picked a, a thrown textbook by somebody who was there some years from the dustbin. And then when I looked at it, he had said he would join Kenya Science. So I also wrote on that book, what about me in 1979? Because I knew I would now do my Form 4 in 1978. Mm. So I also knew since I could not think of A level, because I would not have money, I was already thinking about Kenya Science Teachers College. Mm -hmm. Because it used to take those who are good in sciences yes. from Form 4. Mm. So when I continued, Unfortunately, when we reached in Form 4, there was a strike mm -hmm. on 2nd of July, 1978. And so we were all sent home. Now, coming back meant you had to pay for the damages. But where would Mutoro get the 350 they wanted? Because the bursary doesn't really pay for other things. It only pays for the fees. So that was the end of my being in Form 4. I only waited to go and sit for the exam. So from 2nd of July, I never stepped back in the school until when it was examination time. Oh. It's when I went and now sat for the then East African mm. certificate of examination mm -hmm. before it, we came to KCE and mm. so on. Mm -hmm. So I went and then fortunately I, I passed again eh, in the sciences. And so I applied at the Kenya Science Teachers College. Then, because I was just a small boy, after applying, I forgot about it. You know, I would just go on with playing with the friends. Mm. Then one evening, my uncle, who was working with the Bungoma Municipal Council, I think maybe that time it was not even municipal. Mm -hmm. It was just Bungoma Town Council. Mm. Comes with a newspaper. And we are seated. My name is there. <laughs> <laughs> He's overjoyed because yes. him, he used to take me as his son. Mm -hmm. uh, he was proud of me. Yes. And so, in fact, he never used to buy a newspaper. But somebody mm. saw my name yes. because of the name Mutoro. Yeah. And then he said, hey, your mm -hmm. son is here. Uh -huh. this, this is your son. Yeah. Look at the name. Yes. So he brought me now that newspaper. Yeah. Hey, and actually it was saying the following are supposed to appear for the interview at the Kenya Science Teachers College on 19th April. I had never been in Nairobi <coughs> and I'm in Bungoma. <laughs> and those days the buses we had were called Mawingo, Mawingo buses. Those were the only buses. Mm. So they said you come with a letter that they have sent you. But unfortunately the primary school where I had learned they had not paid the rent, so the post office had closed their box. Mm. You could not get a letter. Mm. So I went to the post office, I explained, then they went behind and brought me that letter. Mm. So I was now just dreaming, oh, 19th April, I'll be Nairobi. in Nairobi <laughs> for the first time, and I don't know even where I'll be going. Eh. And so we looked for my relatives who are here, uh, called Henry Mutoro, I think he's now... He's now the chancellor, mm. vice chancellor of Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So they told me, okay, you will go there. But you see now, I even don't know where he lives. Yes. I even don't know the bus stop in Nairobi. Then I entered the Mawingo bus. And those days, you leave at 6, mm. you reach here at 6 or even at 7. Mm. So when now we reached the Machakos bus stop, I just did not know how to go. And there were no days of cell phone and so on. Yes. You see, it's like God is always in my way. Amen. Yeah. Then I just drop off. And when I step outside, the person who comes to greet me is the student who was in Form 4 when I was in Form 3, but had joined the police. And had been posted in his, he was in South Sea. Yes. So I never went at my uncle's place. Yeah. We went now up to South Sea Police Station. Mm. Then from there now, he's the one who took me to Kenya Science mm -hmm. and showed me this is the place. I will come and pick you from there. Wow. So I went and did the interview. And you see, it was not a guarantee that you will be taken. Yes. Because it was the only S1 training teacher college at that time. Mm -hmm. Because even Kenyatta University, which was having S1 courses, I think they had now uh, abolished them. Mm -hmm. So, after finishing the interviews, he comes, he picked me, and now took me to, to my, uh, my, my uncle's place mm -hmm. where I was supposed to stay. Yes. Then after one week, I went back home. When I reached home, the letter was already there before me, <laughs> then saying I was successful in the interview. Yes. Now I should join Kenya Science Teachers College. Yeah. But now they needed seven hundred, uh, four hundred and seventy-ninety-five shillings for textbook scheme, library, and so on, because everything was uh, fully sponsored at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. You would not pay anything. Mm. Yeah. So now I was wondering, where would I get this money? Then my brother comes, the one whom I follow. Yes. He was now already working in the somewhere in Limuru. Yeah. In Mabruk Tea mm -hmm. Estate. Mm -hmm. He had bought a small eh, gombe. Mm. Ah, then we decided to sell it oh. eh, for me to be able to come. Then we got the money and mm. I came mm. and I continued with my three years training at mm -hmm. Kenya Science Teachers College. Mm -hmm. Tra training in mathematics and physics as yeah. I had dreamed. Yes. That because I'm Mutoro Patrick, I must study for maths in honor mm -hmm. of Mutoro and for physics in honor of Patrick. Yes. Then I finished in uh, 1982 mm -hmm. and I was posted at uh, Mazu Girls High School, yeah. the present Mudavadi Girls High School, mm -hmm. to teach maths and physics. Mm -hmm. After two years, I went to a school in the uh, Bungoma, where now I was born, mm. called Butonke High School. Mm -hmm. Continued teaching mathematics yes. and physics. The principal there loved my job so much that I became almost like his briefcase. Uh, whenever he would come to Nairobi to buy anything, uh, he would let's say, go. Let, let's go, let's go. And he was telling me, you know, I'm training you so that when you go anywhere else, yes. You will always succeed. Yeah. Then I was there for four years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like I was not happy with the pay. Not that they were not paying well. Yeah. Eh? But uh, I didn't like the the category where an S1 teacher who is teaching the same subjects up to the same grade level. Mm -hmm. There is that disparity in the payment between an S1 and the one who has a bachelor's. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody has come from Kenyatta University with a Bachelor of Education, maybe in Maths, Physics, and me, I'm from the Kenya Science Teachers College, also teaching Maths, Physics. They earn more. And we are, yeah, we are teaching the same classes. But we, at the end of the month, I get 1,490 and he gets 2,600. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, I feel this, is, uh, this difference is too much. So I decided now I'm, I'm going to leave the Teacher Service Commission. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking of those years where it was not easy for one to leave a Teacher Service Commission job and go to a private school. Mm -hmm. 
It was not those days of these private schools we have, like Sunshine, like Brookshine. No. Eh? Those days we had just small private schools mm -hmm. eh? where you would even be paid less. Than they t in fact, they didn't like TSC teachers mm. because they you know they are already earning more. Mm -hmm. This is a profit-making school, so yes. you wouldn't want somebody from the government. Yeah. But me, I had said, you know, I will just leave and go. Mm -hmm. uh, then people thought something must be wrong with my head. How can one leave mm. the teacher service commission and uh, I'm told he's going to Wanasema uh, Shule mm. uh, we are at a foot after three months. But uh, me, something was just telling me, no, I, I, I don't want to see this difference. Yes. I, I would agree if I would earn 1,400 yes. and the, 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 the uh, 1,800. Yes, or 600. Accept, or yeah. 600. But a difference of 1,000. Not happening. Ah, no. So I came, I, I, they, I saw in the newspaper they had advertised yes. Laser Hill Academy, eh? once teachers. Yeah. So I applied and they called me. Then when I came for the interview, because uh, people had already told me, if you are going to ask for more money, they will just say, this one is just interested in, in money. In money. Uh, it's not going to teach. Mm. So when Barbara Singh eh, asked me, how much would you like to be paid? And it was like he was very happy. I'm now getting even teachers from the government. Mm -hmm. Then I just said, not less than 4,000. You see, according to me, I've said a lot. Yes. Eh? Not less than 4,000. And he just smiled. I think he knew this person is from the rural area. Yeah. He doesn't know even how expensive life is Here in Nairobi. In Nairobi. Eh? So he said, you have asked for 4,000. I'm going to pay you 5,000. Whoa. Ah, I said, yeah, this is what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I went and uh, even the, pr the principal only heard from home yes. eh, that he, Mr. Motoro is leaving, yeah. is leaving the school. Then he called me, mm. uh, he said, Mr. Motoro, what is this that I'm hearing? Yes. And I told him, oh, I think maybe you have just heard that I'm, I will not be here next year. But why? What's the problem? I, I couldn't talk about them and I said, no, I've just decided. I'm going to a private school. Yeah. Yes. So I reached now Laser Hill Academy. Mm -hmm. eh, they, they had said the, he will be sacked the f after three months. I never saw the sacking come. <laughs> eh? <laughs> if anything, I broke a record there yes. by being the first African to be in charge of the store. Because it was believed the store, somebody to be in charge must be a nation. Yes. No, not an African. Yeah. But maybe they had seen I was so honest and transparent. Mm -hmm. They now, uh, the, the Asian left and went to Greenfields High School in Kitali. Yes. Yeah. And so they gave me, people were even shocked. Yeah. Then they started saying, oh, people like Motoro will be here for years. The, the other colleagues say. But uh, after three years, again, I saw testimony school in Eldoret wants teachers. Mm -hmm. Laser Hill is where you met uh, Maina Kageni? That is where I taught Maina Kageni in Form 3. If you just say the name Motoro, you say, oh yeah, that maths physics teacher. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then in 1991, again, I, I applied testimony school in Eldoret. So, those who had said I would be there for years, <laughs> they found in 1992 I was in testimony. Yes. So testimony is where I stayed, and you see now it was primary, mm -hmm. it had no secondary. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know maths, you can teach anywhere, even in fourth grade. Mm. So I went there, they even made me the deputy headmaster. All right. Uh, yeah, in testimony, uh, and you see it belonged to Mr. Alexander Green, the yes. Zungu. Yeah, and here so, we have uh, yeah, so Patrick Mutoro. Uh, Patrick Mutoro. Deputy. A deputy headmaster. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so I worked up to 2000. Oh. Then he, uh, S -S 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 SOS, it had only a branch in Nairobi here. Yes. And Mombasa and Kisumu. But they opened a high school in, in Eldoret. And because it is like I had made a mark, eh, 
even the tutoring students, they would just say, go to testimony. You'll find a teacher there called Mutoro. Yeah? So all those students mm -hmm. of uh, those lawyers and so on, doctors in Eldoret, they knew whether you go to Alliance High School during the whole day, go to that teacher. Good. You will get an A in maths. Y yes. So, because they st were starting a new school, the mm -hmm. principal just decided, oh, you come and work here. Mm -hmm. yeah? So I went there, I even arranged the timetable. Yeah? I organized it in such a way that uh, I would teach in testimony. And when I'm free, I take my bicycle. Yeah? I run to SOS. Yes. I, I teach my other lessons yeah. for two months as I wait to resign officially mm -hmm. because the contract says you must give notice. Yeah. Then after that, now the two terms I taught. And it is like, uh, again, in respect of my name, Mutoro. I'm told in Kiswahili, Mutoro means Mutu wa kutoroka toroka. So, kutoroka tena. Ni kutoroka tena testimony. Ni kawana talent academy in Langata. Yeah. Once a teacher. Now I went there, now as a headmaster. Yes. But I realized that in some private schools, being a headmaster is just like your work is just to put there the signature mm -hmm. because he will draft everything mm. and you are just to sign mm -hmm. just to make the parents know mm. that that school mm. has a headmaster mm -hmm. it is not the own of the school yes who is actually rolling everything into one mm. uh, is the manager is the headmaster but you you are just there to be signing yes and me i didn't like it eh? Uh, I thought, yeah, that one now is just using me. Mm -hmm. uh, and because uh, I think it looks like maths mm. uh, and physics were mm. marketable subjects. Yes. So I, uh, I applied again in Brookshine. So I, when I went for the interview, uh, again I was taken. In Brookshine? Uh, in Brookshine. Now when I reached Brookshine, I was given a Form 3 to move with it to Form 4. Yeah. But then they said, that you must reach a mean of seven in KCSE. Otherwise, you will be fired. So, when my class reached the form, four, form four in 2005, when they sat for KCSE, I only got 5.2 mm -hmm. as my mean. Mm. See, so, I had fallen short of the glory of uh, Brookshire. Yes. That meant I would not be a teacher there. Yeah. So when they, on the day the results were released, they, they, they just looked at those. I was not the only one. Mm. About seven of us mm. had scored less than seven, not just in maths, but in any other subject. Mm. So the owner of the school he came on that day and he came with the sucking letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Motoro is one of them who has been fired. But on that day, when he was coming with the letters, mm. I was doing the interview mm. at Sunshine Secondary School, <laughs> which had been the second in the nation. Mutoro! So, yeah, so you, uh, when I came back, yes. of course now people uh, are talking, talking, yes. but me, I reached there now, it is night time. Mm. I slept, and you know, we used to teach in the morning. Yeah. Uh, during preps, before the, the lessons begin, uh -huh. you go and teach. Yeah. And on the timetable that yes. morning, yeah. I was supposed to go and teach. So I come in the, the staff room, I check, teachers are just sympathizing with me. Mm. Mm. In fact, one of the teachers said, Mr. Mtoro, don't, don't even go and teach that class. Because they know I've been fired. Mm. Eh? Don't go and teach that Form 2 maths class. Then me, I told them, I did not wake up very early in the morning to pick a sucking letter. I woke up in the morning to go and teach the students. So let me do what made me to wake up in the morning first. Wow. Go and teach them. Wow. Then I come and pick the sucking letter. So after that, I taught. Then I went to the principal's office. Yes. Him, he was even scared. He didn't know what to tell me. Mm. You know, it's like he sympathized with yeah. you. Yeah. He's a very good teacher. Mm. You see, it is just that like these kids, uh, they were not good. Mm. Uh, then me, I entered and I told him, no, me, I've been in more private schools than any teacher here. Yeah? So for me, 
I, I take uh, teaching in private schools, like uh, broadcasting stations. Mm -hmm. Today I'm in KISS 100. Yes. Tomorrow I'm in KBC. Yes. Maybe next year. You are at uh, Tuko. I, I'm, I, I'm at Tuko. Mm. <laughs> hey, then he, he was now happy because yeah. he thought, how am I going to t talk to him and yeah. so on. Yeah. He said, yeah, just give me my, my letter. Mm -hmm. mm, then he gave me, uh, they had even put there the, the, the one month salary. For, for not uh, having given the notice. Yes. But they said the February salary we will give you when you vacate the house. Mm -hmm. Then I walked away. Not knowing that I was now going to sunshine. sunshine. In fact, it's me who would have had a problem of giving one month's notice mm -hmm. if they would not have sacked me. Because Sunshine it, wanted uh, you right and there. Ah, on 1st of March. Come here. And you see the results were released on 28th of y March. Yes. Yeah, and they want me to start on 1st of March. Yes. Now I was wondering, how am I going to give the one month's notice? Yeah, maybe let me just go and lose the one month's salary for yes. February. Yes, yeah. Yeah. But now you reach there, already you have been fired. Yeah. So I just went to Sunshine mm -hmm. High School. So they were not able now to explain to the parents why Mr. Mutoro has been sacked. Because you see the students knew he was a good teacher. Yes. Yeah. And you see for them, their aim was to tell them, but he, he, his results, look, mm -hmm. he produced 5.2 only. Mm -hmm. But now parents would wonder, but how come he is now in Sunshine Secondary School that is the second top private school in the nation? Even you would wonder how. How? How can you say he's a poor teacher? And he's and, now, and now in the he's best. in a school that was second yes. and you, you are not even among the top 100. Yes. They would just tell him, hey, Mr. Torre, it looks like you made a mark. Mm. Even they don't know that I had been sacked there. Yeah. Yeah. You made a mark in the Brookshire. Yeah. Students are writing yeah. here letters yeah. that they want you back. Yeah. yeah. And so there be the president, Moi, was very happy that Sunshine was the second in the nation. Yes. Now he gave us a trip to Egypt. Oy. You see, for seven days. And I didn't do anything there. Yes. But now I'm part of the staff. So you have to go. Yes. So they said, okay, now you are going to go to Egypt. Yes. But you know, you must have a passport. Yeah. And you know, most teachers didn't have, not most, none of them had, mm. except me. Mm. Me, I had taken mine in 2002 and it was just accumulating dust. <laughs> I said, yeah, I have my passport. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, so on the list, yes. I was the third. Yeah. Maybe I could even have been written the second, but they can't write it. Uh, headmaster, mm -hmm. then they put there another yes. person. So yes. it was the headmaster, the deputy, deputy then Mutoro. Yes. The others, uh, they are still struggling to see if they will get the passport. The passports. So you get the passport, we put there your name. Mm. I was able now to go to Egypt mm -hmm. when Brookshine could not take me even to Kamulu Market. I was guy. For a trip. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Shade o'clock. Uh, uh, you see? Uh -huh. Yes. So now, um, Kamulu. Eh, eh, Kamulu, eh, which is the nearest market, <laughs> Brookshire had not taken us there for a trip. And here now is a school taking me to <laughs> Egypt for seven days. Yes. And I had not even taught anything. Yes. Yeah. And so, <laughs> when I was there, now I worked for six years. In yeah. fact, the following year, they took us now to Foyage, Mombasa, for again another seven days, mm. where they would just put a blue ribbon on your hand meaning you are free to eat anything eh? because everything has been paid yes and i said you can see how god can uh, change things all yes. of a sudden yes eh? from a place that could not take me to even the nearest <laughs> market <laughs> and now to a place that takes me even to places i had never been so while i was there now i was just walking the nairobi street yes and you see around october you yeah. always see things um green card yeah. processed here yeah then i and i was as illiterate as a cockroach in computer work the computers were at a sunshine mm -hmm. but i never entered there mm -hmm. because i knew my work is just maths and physics uh, and physics why waste my time going mm. here mm. Uh, so i entered there and i said i also want to fill this green card so i only gave the particulars because i don't know anything to do with the computer mm. Yeah. If you gave me even a computer at that time, I would even wonder why is it that the keyboard 
doesn't have A, B, C, D. Why is it that you have A here and then <laughs> when I want to look for B, I thought I should go in order. Then you find B C down here. Why? Yeah, now. Yeah. Instead of having it there so that I know if it is B, I know C is here and yes. D should be here. Yes. Yes. So I just gave the particulars <laughs> and the field. Mm -hmm. But jokingly, I was not serious. Then they said, okay, this is your confirmation number. Keep it. Uh, next year, on around the 10th of May, results will be released. You can be checking. Mm -hmm. The following year, me, I, I could not remember that I even filled. Then uh, around October, when I was just again walking in this street, Tom mm -hmm. Boyer Street, mm -hmm. I remember, this is this the place where I, I feel that green card? Then I entered. But I always had it in my wallet, the confirmation number. Mm. So I went to the same place and said, now check for me. <laughs> and you see, it is October. It's October. But the goodness that the process continues even up to the following year. Yes. Even if you have not checked. Mm -hmm. So I gave the number, he tried the first time, it could not uh, enter, he tried the second time, then he told me, imagine you won. Wow. Eh? I mean, even, uh, it's like yeah, I was not even understanding what he was saying. Yes. But the people there now started clapping for me, hands, eh? it's like uh, they are very happy. Yes. Yeah. Then now I went and downloaded the forms. Yeah. And uh, that's when I discovered that they choose 100,000 people in the whole world, mm. but they will take 50,000. So on the form they tell you, feel carefully if you want to be chosen. Mm -hmm. And I knew, ah, that one I will feel, mm. even if it is handwritten, people have been saying my handwriting is very good. I went and filled the forms eh, carefully and they want even a passport size photograph to be attached. But me at that time, I didn't have any. Mm. So I took my whole picture and he just put it there. I said, if they don't want it, let me let them not take me. After all, I was not very serious. <laughs> the whole photo of me, I, I thought of even cutting it to make it passport, passport size. But I just said, let me put there the yes. whole of it. Yes. Uh, maybe it will even show me the way I am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> than, than the passport. Yeah. And then I posted. And uh, they still uh, they accepted me mm -hmm. and even returned my photo. <laughs> I returned it. So when I went to the embassy, I was given the, uh, the photo. <laughs> <laughs> I think they knew uh, the, this person from Africa, maybe. Mm. Eh? Yes. Yeah, but it looks like he has the potential. Yeah. So that is where the journey begins. Mm -hmm. You have now won the green card, but there are other things that are required, like uh, me medical examination. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't go to any. They tell you, you go to this x-ray, you'll go to Nairobi hospital. I had to pay 30,000. And that is 30,000 in 20, 2011. Maybe it is now even 50,000. Mm. Then after that, on the day of the interview, they tell you, you'll pay 80,000 Kenya shillings. But they even tell you, this is not a guarantee that you'll be taken. If you don't want to pay, you better stop there. Don't proceed. Mm -hmm. So I looked, hey, should I pay this 80,000? Or should I just even go and buy a plot? Mm -hmm. eh? But I said, that anyway, let me just uh, put it there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe luck is always my way. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. eh, but people at uh, Sunshine had already told me, you, you will just reach there two minutes and they will close the window and say, next person. Mm. Eh? Not knowing that they had done an interview there yes. and they were not successful. Mm -hmm. So they were just saying, Mutoro, you won't succeed. Mm. That place, you just reach there and they will tell you, no, next. Mm -hmm. mm. But when I went for the interview, uh, they asked me where I had been. I told them I've been to Egypt and that's the only place I've been outside uh, Kenya. Yeah. Yes. But they want uh, the bank statement. It must show that at least you are capable of even getting the air ticket. Mm -hmm. But me, because of borrowing loans, eh, when I'm with Sunshine yes. to educate my kids mm -hmm. and so on, mm. my pay slip was very long because of the deductions. Yes. Eh? At the end, 
It just read 6,800. After all, I've paid everything. The, the house I pay in the school campus. But very fortunately, I stayed with a friend of mine mm. who was supposed to go for master's and he had 150,000. So I told him, give me this money. I go and put on my account. Yes. Then when I finish the interview, uh, we withdraw. Uh, I will withdraw <laughs> and give it back to you. <laughs> but because of the trust, you know, he has in me. Yes. He gave me. Yeah. Yeah. So I put on the money, not knowing that that one will now raise another question. Because they want the bank statement from January up to that November. Mm. So the interviewer looks at the, my net pay, 6,000, 7,000, 800, mm. and so on. But now in November, he it's sees reading 150,000. 150, then he asked me, look, you have been getting this much money all this time, up to October. Where did you get 150,000 mm -hmm. all of a sudden? Mm -hmm. Then I said, I sold my plot because I, I knew I was going to the U.S. Wow. So I sold my plot. Yes. Uh, so there was no other question. Yeah. Yeah, because it was my plot. Mm. Yeah, and I had carried even the title, the title deed. deed, yes. Yeah. But actually, the title deed, we had bought a, a plot, a, in fact, acres, maybe 10 acres, Yes. A, as a group of sunshine. Mm. But uh, we had not even processed uh, much yes. for me to be able even to sell anything there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, uh, it's like I was passing the interview. So then he, he, you know, you are supposed to have affidavit of support. Yes somebody in the U.S. to show that he will accommodate you. Mm -hmm. Because if you have been told you are free to go to any part of Kenya, yeah. when you reach Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, mm. where are you going to go? Uh -huh. You must know somebody yes. who will come to pick me, like my friend Collins. Yes. Uh, he had to come and pick me from the bus stop. Mm. So I had gotten somebody there. But I didn't know that uh, they will look at how much that person is earning and whether he's capable of accommodating an extra person. Mm -hmm. You see, for us in Kenya here, we say, Bora tu ata tukikunywa maji ya chumvi, nisawa, ata tukilala chini. Bora tulale. Bora tulale, tutaomoka siku ingini. Tuta? Sijie, mimi onye muna sema ati aliomoka. Now, they looked at it at the embassy, and uh, that man asked me, do you know anybody else in the U.S.? I was wondering. Me, I have looked at his pay. It's like he's getting 180,000. Yeah. Uh, it was, I know it was 18,000 yes. dollars yeah. uh, per year. So when I change into Kenya, this one is getting 1.8 million mm -hmm. in a year. And me, I can't get yes. at Sunshine. Yes. But to them, they know that life there is so expensive that that is nothing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, according to them, he's even earning below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. So there is no way he can be allowed to accommodate another person. Yes. Yeah. So th this Muzungu told me, you know, we want you to look for somebody who will help you get a job. Right? That's when I was wondering, again, to help me get a job. See, I thought uh, on the, the envelope they have already written Eh, which is sealed, but on top they have written what you can do mm -hmm. according to what you have been doing in Kenya. Mm. So they had written, he can teach from pre-K to high school, mm -hmm. but not post-secondary. Mm -hmm. eh, so now me, I was just imagining, see, I'll just reach there and the, the following week. I have make, a job. The, the, the TSC there sends me to a school to start teaching. Again, they are saying to help me look for a job. And so I said, okay. I have uh, somebody else. Now I started thinking of my relatives who mm. have been there. Mm. Maybe we have not been communicating. Mm -hmm. But now that was the time. Yes. Uh, yes. So I said, yes, uh, Ben Mutoro. Uh, they checked in the computer. I said, oh, yeah, Ben Mutoro is in Texas. Yes. Okay. So go to Ben Mutoro. Tell him to bring you W2 form. I, at that time, even I didn't know what is this W2 form. Mm. Then I realized that that is the, 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 the tax return. 
and you know the tax return will show already what that person earns, mm. uh, whether he's capable of accommodating you. Mm -hmm. When I called him, he said, oh, my cousin, uh, I didn't file my tax last year. Ah, oh, yeah. Hey, now I'm losing the, the place. Oh, yeah. I quickly thought of another one. Yes. Who had gone there in 1983. Mm. You see, we are also not communicating, but now you must look for everything. Yes. As a teacher, you must learn to improvise. Yes. Yes. Then I called him, and he, him, he was working. But he, later on, he told me, he was also hesitant to send me that form mm. because he didn't want to imagine that I would go there and start suffering mm. in his hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But me, I, I, I quickly told him, I just want the W2 form, but mm -hmm. I'm not coming where you are. Mm -hmm. I, I have already found where I'm going to live. But he just sent me the W2 form. Mm -hmm. So he sent me. Of course, him now, he was earning 120000 uh, so <laughs> dollars per year, uh, that one was okay. Mm. So when I forwarded it to the embassy, they brought me the passport. Wow. Uh, with the visa. Then now the journey began. Mm -hmm. So on 30th of May 2012, uh, the son of man was now going to the airport. Uh, for me it's like, uh, I was just praying I'm now going to heaven. Then so they say there everything is free. Yeah, and people had already told me, you sit there when you win the green card, you'll be given a house, you'll be given a job. So I reached there. And after the first week, I tried to find out. I don't see anything like teacher service commission that employs teachers. Then when I tried now to find out, oh, first qualification, you must have bachelors to teach in standard one to 12th grade. Bachelor's? Bachelor's degree. That eh. is the first qualification for any teacher to teach in the standard one, not in the high school, standard one up to high school. Because there it doesn't matter. I could be teaching standard one, you teach form four, your maths or physics, Yes. but the salary is the same. Wow. As long as you are in the same district. And the district there is not like Bungoma district before it became a county. It is a zone. Like this Westlands, there would be Westlands Unified School District. Mm -hmm. Maybe in charge of only seven secondary schools or five, secondary sco uh, five primary and two secondary schools. Mm -hmm. That is the zone. Mm. Even the pay is from that district. All that comes from the federal. Yes. Yes. So now I was wondering, hey, what would I do? Bachelors and me, I don't have. Yeah. And I've been teaching in the high school. And good schools. Uh, and good schools. And uh, I'm a good teacher. Maybe in Kenya, but I don't know whether I can be good with my Luya accent. Mm. Maybe I may not be able, but I knew with maths. I think maybe the accent may not matter very much. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? Now you have to look for any job. You reach there and your friends who have been there from Kenya, they will only tell you two, two kinds of jobs, caregiving and security. Kasi Arungu. Although there you don't hold a rungu because that is a weapon. Mm. You are as a security guard, you are just to observe and report. You are not a police officer. So I quickly went for that. Hey. Yeah. Yarungu. Yarungu at Nkafa uniform. Nasi at Nkafa at uniform. Mm. At Yarungu, you must go for training. Yeah. For three days. So they tell you what you are supposed to be doing. Yeah? Don't touch into ladies' bags because you are at Hetia supermarket or Naifas. You and your cousin are mm. yeah. wow. Standing there to watch those who may want to pickpocket mm. things. And even when I see you pickpocketing something mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. from the shelves, mm. I, I don't come and demand I want to check in your bag. You even if I saw you putting there, you are not a police officer. You, as you have observed, report. And you see there, when you call police, Pengine si kama sisi hapa Kenya, you know, uh, let me say like Bungoma, mm. eh, where you will go and say, Una pesa ya mafuta, tuweke mafuta, tuende tumishika pana. Mm. Uko, even I've never seen a police officer walking on foot. Even if he has to stop you, he will stop you using the car. Not a roadblock, mm. even nobody does this, even in the bus. 
in the bus you just go at the bus stop yeah so unlike here there are no traffic cops in the roads like stopping you and checking uh, they are there yes but they are in the car and they are not positioned here at up and your roadblock up and you kifika wa matatu wa metoa pesa already at unajua ya scar hapana they are in the cars yes. so if this is their area westlands they are just also driving mm. yeah, and when they see even of a speeding they will people to stop you mm -hmm. yeah, to pull over yes kuna hiyo at ya scar yanatembea at amesimama at up on your roadblock by up even every school has a, a police car there every school yeah, there is a police car wow and he has even an office wow yes so that when there is something wrong the securities in the school will now call the police officer because he's the one who has the powers mm. even to he, handcuff uh, yes. The, yes so, so you so, worked as a security so, so, uh, that's why i went for training as security because that's where you take the shortest period yeah. three days yeah yeah into a car Eh, to ambia sasa you will answer some questions then we will give you the card card if you are in california mm. you will get california card card sasa mimi nikapata kazi ya safe mart supermarket just like nakumat or naifas mm. eh, every day you go and stand there for say, eight hours because there you work by hours mm -hmm. eh, just observe after every hour you go for 10 minutes break and una simama miku ina choka mpaka anaiwanda am i the one who was actually a maths physics teacher you are fellow kenyan the moment you reach oh umejaribu security nobody is telling you su su fanye classes ukwe mwalimu even one went to the extent of saying why is uncle patrick at just looking for teaching he thinks this is kenya yeah. I, even people told me forget forget but me i was just oh okay, okay. But they are already registered eh, for classes. Wow. And you see, I had to look for them myself. Mm. Eh, because we are talking of a situation where you have not come across somebody who is a teacher yes. to, to help you and say, oh, and yeah, guide you. Eh, do this, do mm. this. I'm just doing it on my own. Mm -hmm. The computers that I used to ignore when I was in Sunshine, now eh, that was from my place. Every day going to the library. I was going to the library like a student until they knew me there. I would just enter there. Oh, Patrick, I know you had computer. Mm. Okay, you wait for number five. Mm. Okay. Then I, when I was just seated, I saw an advert. Uh, Grand Canyon University uh, has a teacher preparation program. I, 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 I applied for that. Wow. Uh, then somebody, a representative, called me. Mm. Uh, he interviewed me and then said, Yeah. You, even we can give you an air ticket, mm -hmm. you come and see our university. Wow. And you see Grand Canyon University mm -hmm. is in Arizona. Yes. And for me, I'm in California. Mm -hmm. It is like you are in Kenya here, and this university is in South Africa. Ah. Uh, but you see there, the, the states just work the same way. Yes. Yes. So I applied. Then it's, uh, they, they, they sent me the air ticket to go and see where the college is in mm -hmm. another state mm -hmm. before I come back to do the online classes. Yeah. Then even my friends told me, you, you will be stranded. They, 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 they can give you the ticket for mm -hmm. going, Yes. but uh, you will be stranded there. They will not give you the ticket for coming, for coming back. back. Because you see, for them, they have been there for years. Yes. It's like they know more. Mm. Uh, and me, I'm still in you. So they are advising me I will be stranded. Mm. And then me, I had already started the situation and I said, if I get stranded, I can take them to police. Yeah. yeah I can go and report to the police that yeah. uh, they, they, they promised to give me the air ticket yes. back, but they have not given me. Yeah. So in the morning I went. When I reached the airport in uh, Arizona, they were already ho holding a the, uh, the air ticket for coming back before even they take you to college. Yes. You reach, you greet them, they give you your air ticket wow. back. Wow. Then they take you to college. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when they told, showed us how, how we are going to work online, mm. and here is the man who is as literate as a cockroach in computer, but he's going to take online classes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm prepared. Yes. So they taught us. Then they dropped us back to the airport. The people in California saw, saw me come back and they said, I, This one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> Yeah. So I came back. And you took the courses? And then, yeah, on, on 4th, 
yeah. of February, yeah. I was ready to start classes mm -hmm. with one finger. Yeah. I was able to finish those four-year course. Yes. So you are working as a security? As a security. And then you are going for your uh, online for, classes? Yeah. In the, in the, the evening or, yes. in it or in the weekend. Yeah. Because there's, you work only five days yes. per week. Yeah. Uh, and you see the assignments were always due mm. on Sunday mm. at 11.59 mm. p.m. Mm. Are yeah. people not talking? Are they not saying, are you not hearing people say, how can a math teacher yeah. go and become a security guard? Or are you not hearing people say, Mr. Mutoro now is a security guard in America? How will they say if Mutoro doesn't tell them? Ah, uh, uh, how, how many do we have? You go there, you cannot get even a policeman because after all, you are even above 26 years. Or you live here, you are a DO. You reach there, there is nothing called a DO. What mm. do you do? Does everybody even say what he's doing there? Mm. See, people at home, if I don't tell them, oh, si watasema tu, oh, Mutoro kalikuwa kana fundisha sunshine, mm. siku hizi kana fundisha America. Mm. They wouldn't know Mutoro is holding a room. They won't know mm. until I and, until I tell them. Of course, it is my people who will know mm. because I've used that to show them. Yes, mm, that nothing is impossible if you are determined. Yeah, yeah. For the sake of my kids in Kenya, I was prepared to die because I wanted my kids to go to school. If I go there and then they don't go to school, what will be the story at home? Especially if you happen to be a lawyer like me, eh? you mm. know, we are very good in talking. Mutoro kalitoroka watoto bwana. This one's walking on the market. They, 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 they are Mutoro's kids. Kalitoroka kakaenda America. Sasa ata hawaenda shule. Kakasahau watoto. Eh, Kakasahau watoto. Eh. Don't consider that everybody is the same. Mm -hmm. And that's why even as a teacher, you don't just use one size fits all to teach. No. As you prepare your lesson, you must know in this class I'm going to find mm. this student mm. who doesn't know any maths. Mm. Therefore, I must also model my teaching in such a way yes. that this student, yeah. Collins, mm. maybe who is poor in maths, if he's operating at his seventh grade level and yet he's a form one, this is what I should give him mm. so that he can close the gap. Mm. And perhaps that is one thing that he is different between the United States and the Kenya. Yeah. In Kenya, we are content oriented. Yes. Yeah. That's why how many A's did he get? Not what was his potentiality? Mm. Did you match mm. it with his career aspiration? I love no. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why in the US, you will find that if you go to a cooking class, there are even more boys than girls. Mm -hmm. You can't believe it. Yes. But if it is here, yeah. you may be lucky to find two boys taking cookie. Because it's all about the potential. Uh, the poten yeah, academic. Did he get A in maths, A in physics, and so on? Yeah. That's why in the US, P is just as marketable as mathematics. Yeah. It is a subject that is examinable. Wow. Yeah. P? P is a subject that is examinable. Because if I'm good in P, yeah, now you want to kill me with the maths, and yet I can specialize in PE. Why not test me in PE? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to concentrate on maths, physics, and so on? Yes. And yet me, I'm very good. Eh? That's why even I tell my students, they say, oh, do you drive? I say, no, I don't drive. So you know I'm from Kenya. Mm. And they all know that Kenya produces the best runners in long distance yes. eh, races. So I tell them, no, me, so you know I'm from Kenya. Oh, yeah. yeah. I drive myself. I don't drive the car. <laughs> so I pick the key. Can I? Say, me, me, I just take the keys and I say, and then I start running from home. <laughs> and you know, they believe because see, they see, they see Kenyans winning. I take yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you well, so, well, so I drive myself. Oh, I, I don't even buy, they call it gas, but yes. in petrol. Yeah. Yes. I don't buy it. Blood, blood. My blood is the, is the, is the gas. So I just take this Thank key. you so much for then representing I, us so well. Uh, yeah, yes. then I start running. So they believe. <laughs> They believe. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Even they say, oh, <laughs> even even in Kenya, we, we don't have uh, dogs and cats as pets. I tell them my my pet is a giraffe uh, and a monkey. Hey, hey. So everybody 
at lunch time wants to see hey Mr Mutoro at he has a giraffe eh as his pet not a dog <laughs> eh? then i tell them and you know why i have a giraffe because we have planted even oranges so when i want to pick the good ones i just climb on my giraffe and you know it's tall and i pick my oranges i pick eh? I think they just say, ah, to be taught much, Mutoro. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> to pick oranges. Yeah, yes, or, or, or a mango. I just go on my giraffes. You know giraffes, they are, you see how tall they are? Yes. So I just walk there and then I pick what I want. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so four years yeah. as a security guard. So, so yeah. So then I, I, after you now, became secu- a teacher again. Yes. See, after security guard, yes. when I just got the certificate. Yeah. And now, because I had trained myself in the U.S., yes. which question were they going to ask me that yeah. I don't know? Yeah. So when I got now, I just applied. I went, and even one of the interviewers late asked, told me when we saw the name Motoro. We thought you are a Japanese, so which means they quickly eh, invited me because they knew oh, these Japanese. I think they are good in science. Mm. After all, they are the ones who manufacture Toyotas. Yes. Eh, so we have gotten the teacher. Yeah. Then they see it is just a black person me, eh? <laughs> <coughs> not the Japanese. Yes. Mm. So he said, oh, you know when we we invited you. When we saw the name Mutoro, we thought you are a Japanese. Yeah. But I'm also always ready with yes. an answer. Yeah. Then I told him, oh yeah, but maths never began in Japan, it began in Africa. Come on now. They, they, they gave me the job. Yes. Yeah. Maths yeah. began in, in, Africa. in Africa. Yeah. And that's so why I'm, I'm looking for that maths position. Yes. Yeah. So you got the job. I got the job. Yeah. From August 2017, I've been a maths teacher. But just like my name again, I've now taught for four years and I'm in my fourth school. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in your fourth school? In the fourth year and I'm in my fourth school. Yeah. And you see there, since there is no teacher service commission, mm. if, as long as you say next year, me, I will not be here. Mm-hmm. Oh, good for you. Yeah, maybe you have found where they can add you mm. $2 more than yes. what you are doing. Yeah. Let's just say good for you. Yeah. As long as you have written in your resignation. And you've been there now for nine years. Hey, you are a tough mathematician. Yes. Hey, nine years. Nine and years. And maybe now 27 days. M- Mr. Although I'm in Kenya, but yes. I still count like I'm still there. Yes. Hey, I'm only on a tour. Yeah. <coughs> yes. You know I really performed well in math. Uh, see, that's why I'm saying, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Real talk. Uh? Ukweli. Mm. So, um, mm. where is the accent? The accent? Eh. The, 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 my accent is still pure Kibu. Kibukusu or Luya. Yes. Uh, I've never acquired anything there mm. because uh, I went there at an age that uh, I didn't want to learn other things. Yeah. Uh, the way kids will reach there and after two years they have already changed. Mm-hmm. But me, I've never changed. I even still say I'm going to school. Eh? I don't say I'm going to do this because <laughs> eh? I have seen so many who try to, to, to behave. Eh? like uh, an American, yes. and then he says, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna now start. Now you start to wonder, Ngona, now this Ngona, see, see, you better even say Kiswahili. Eh? Yes. At least they will know that's a different language. Yes, Ngona. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go, yeah. because the bus, yes. uh, the bus is, is, is almost going, yes. you see? Yeah. yeah. What mm. are some of the mistakes you think Kenyans mm. make when they go to the U.S.? They don't make uh, mistakes. Mm. I would be wrong to say they make mistakes. Yeah. But uh, we go there, including me, with the high expectations. Eh? Like me, I went knowing that maybe w- the first week will be just relaxing, but the following week I will find myself teaching. Mm. But you reach there, you find things are different. Yeah. Yeah. They will ask you, do you have California teaching credential? Don't tell them I have a PhD or I have a master's, no. So if you don't have, they will evaluate your 
certificates from here and then they will tell you you, don't, you didn't you didn't take this course you didn't take this one for differentiated instruction mm. you didn't take this one for english language learners mm. you see this is a country of diversity how are you going to model your teaching so that you can be able to teach these students mm. who doesn't know english mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a free house, like they say, with a green card? They only give houses to refugees. Yeah. But if you have won the green card, you have only the permission to go to any of the 50 states in the U.S. They will give you nothing complete. Just the permission? That is just the permission. Hey. Yeah, yes. No house, no nothing? Nothing. Wow. Yeah. So you reach there now, you have to struggle on your own. Mm. Yes. So it is you now to change to be what you want to be. Mm. Yes. Does the green card equate to citizenship? That's again what people think that, oh, Sammy Malisa, five years, now he's a citizen. No, I have finished nine years. I'm still a permanent resident. Because to become a citizen, you must apply again after five years. And even after the five years, they will want to find out whether you have been going out of the country for mm. how many days so mm -hmm. that they remove. If they remove and it becomes less than two-thirds of the five years, then you haven't qualified. But when you qualify, mm. you apply. Just like the way we apply for other things. Mm -hmm. if, in fact, they charge now $800. Maybe it is now even 1000 mm. So you must have that money to pay before now you can proceed. And it's not a guarantee you will get the citizenship uh, see, after five it, years? It's, it's an interview again. Yes. They will give you the constitution. Eh, you go and read, and they tell you out of these 100 questions, you will be asked 10. And maybe you must score 8 out of 10 or 7. Mm. And it goes with the age. Mm. Eh, if you are old, mm. maybe if you pass 6, yeah. eh, they allow you. Eh. As we conclude, eh, yeah. what would be your parting shot to our audience? My parting shot would be that when you want to come to the U.S., even when you have won the green card. Mm. I remember when I was doing history, we used to have questions like compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. So it is better to compare eh, what you are coming to benefit and compare with what you are having now. If, for example, you don't have young kids who are coming to learn, mm. why should you leave your good job thinking you will get the same job that you, you had here. Mm -hmm. Because you reach there, maybe you are, let's say you are a lecturer at Kenya Institute of Administration. And you see here, you will be told mm -hmm. you will get an administrative job mm -hmm. because they know you are a lecturer in Kenya Institute yeah. of Administration. Yes. But when you reach there, there will be no administrative job mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. yeah. So you still go back maybe to security. Yeah. yeah. Do your research. Yeah, so do your research. It is only that people maybe don't come and tell us what it is mm -hmm. so that we can also prepare mm. ourselves. Mm. So I'm telling my colleagues, whether you are, they are Kenyans or uh, anywhere in any part of Africa or outside the U.S., mm. that sometimes you will not end up getting what you want. So come, if you are that type of person who does not select jobs. But don't come thinking, I was, a, I was an administrator here, and I'm going to get an administrative job. Mm. No. The two common jobs there are caregiving and security. And so for men, mostly, we go for security. For ladies, caregiving. caregiving. Mm. Don't you think that, oh, mimi naenda kukua at a house, uh, house girl, uh, house help. Nobody can afford to pay a house help. So you do the caregiving where we have care homes. Mm. Yeah. And this caregiving, you may work with a person whom you have to help everything. And everything means everything. Kila kitu. Kila kitu. Even cleaning behind. They say cleaning people's behind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you will find maybe somebody who is alive because of the good care. Yeah. So, even you have to remind that person to take medicine mm -hmm. eh? and he will not remind you that he has uh, 
done the unwanted stuff on the bed, yeah. it is up to you to know that yes. you have to clean that. Yes. Eh? Yeah. yeah. So if you don't have a job in Kenya, ah, kuja, kuja, maramoja. Mm. Because there, as long as you are sober, yes. you will always find a job. As long as you are sober. So, sober, yeah, because yeah. there are so many homeless people there. It is only that you, they, they, they can't afford to come here. Maybe you want to come, but you cannot come. But you went thinking that things are just there. Mm, yeah? mm. That you are going just to find mana there. It, it Akuna like, mana. Akuna. There is no mana. Uh -huh. You have to work hard. You have to work hard. Yeah. You've made you've really made me laugh. And mm. I appreciate even you taking your time oh, to yes. come and try educate our Kenyans. Yeah. But for me, most importantly, it's your journey. I've mm. learned that you can be anything. Yes. Because I'll go back to where we started this conversation. Oh, you yeah. did not have everything on a silver mm -hmm. uh, platter, but yeah. we can see how hard you've worked uh, yes. to, be, to be where you are. Mm. And I know there are thousands of uh, your former students who will watch oh, and yes. they will gladly appreciate the role yeah. that you played in their lives. Mm. So we truly appreciate you and oh, we sure. appreciate your honesty. We appreciate the authenticity. Mm. I appreciate the fact that you are even willing to come and speak the truth. Uh, yes. The truth, the way. Yeah. So thank you so much. And even mm -hmm. as you go back, uh, we yes. want to say thank you for supporting our work, even mm -hmm. from diaspora. Mm -hmm. When I get an email, someone is from California telling mm -hmm. me they are watching Tuko, yeah, yeah. that for me, it's a plus. Yeah, sure. For me and my team, oh, we okay. truly appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. So even as you go back, Sisi tuna mengi ya kukupatia, lakini salimia na uko. Yeah, Wasalimie uko na uambie tunashukuru sana. Yeah, even yes. me, I'm still willing. Yeah. Those who want to come back, they mm -hmm. can always reach me if they yeah. want. Yes. My email is yes. just my two names, yeah. Patrick Mutoro yeah. at yahoo.com. Yes. Or if they want my number, yeah. if they want the U.S. number, yeah. it's positive one. Yeah. Nine one six three three five three yeah. four four one. Nikubo. Yeah, they, they are like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've given the yes. code plus everything. Yes. Yes. Y yes. Yeah. So it may be he just wants to know anything. They yeah? can reach May out maybe to Maybe it you. could just be something to do with education. Yes. Yeah, you can say, hey, but how, how do you do this? Mm -hmm. uh, for us, we are doing this and this. Yeah. We just want to help each other. Mm. Uh, yes. So they can I reach. also feel happy when I find I have helped somebody. Good. Uh, and Good. they have succeeded because of me. Yes. yes. Lovely. Mm. So my people, thank you so much for watching. And as you've heard, Mr. Patrick, Patrick for physics and Mutoro for mathematics, he has left his email and his phone number right here on the screen so if you have any questions about going to the USA if you have any questions about the green card about even the education system then he's definitely he's definitely your contact person so feel free to reach out to him and as always we truly appreciate your support on this show let me know what other topics would you like me to handle on the show what have you learned today from our guest and what is your take home from this entire conversation till next time my name is lynn googi if you want to get hold of me share your story or anything my email is right on the screen feel free to reach out to it one and next time bye bye, bye. <laughs>